Hello, and welcome to FDW's monthly webinar series. Uh, my name is Reed Moles. I am the Pro Audio and Technical Trainer here at FDW. Today, we're going to be talking about Dante Solutions for Integrators and Consultants. This is brought to you by TASCAM. Uh, presenting today is going to be Paul Youngblood. Before we get into the topic, let's go over a quick housekeeping items. We will have a question feature available for you to ask questions. Um, you can ask questions throughout the presentation. However, they're going to be answered at the very end. There will be a question bar to the right of your screen where you can type in the questions. And like I said, we will answer these at the end. We'll also be recording this presentation. Um, if you are unable to attend for the full session um, or would like to show it to someone else, um, at the end, we ask that you please fill out the survey. This will help us greatly uh, improve presentations going forward. So let's meet our presenter today. Presenting with TASCAM is Paul Youngblood. Um, Paul, it looks like you have quite a bit of experience in this industry. Um, if you could, please highlight uh, some, some of your experience. Oh, first of all, thank you for having me here, Reed. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, it's more about the product than me, but I appreciate that. I've been in the industry for many years. Um, I was with a MI slash kind of pro audio company, Roland and Boss, for 31 years. Um, and during that period, I helped develop a lot of their products, anywhere from the loop stations to the Roland brand V drums and whatnot. And uh, uh, that's where I got my training, and as you know, um, uh, you know it's a it's a good company, and the product is solid. However, it's a pleasure after I retired from Roland to go to Tascam. Tascam having many worlds first as well, and lots of innovations. You know, Tascam basically literally invented the home recording uh, revolution um, with the Porta Studio. But anyway, um, we're here to talk more about Pro Audio and Dante Solutions. So it's my pleasure to be here and thank you, Reed. Thank you. So without further ado, uh, let me move on here. And like I said, and Reed said, uh, we are gonna talk about Dante Solutions for integrators and consultants of which Tascam has some products. Now, folks, I'm gonna assume that you have some basic Dante knowledge I'm not going to get into the deep nuts and bolts or explanation of Dante as a proto protocol. Um, uh, I'm assuming that you know you already have some basic Dante knowledge. Um, in this short presentation, or last probably 20, 25 minutes, um, we'll also fire up a Dante system real time though, and I will show you how to control and manipulate a Dante uh, system using the Tascam Dante converters real time. So let's look at the first product that I wanted to present and talk about. This product and these products, there are two in the line, are IO boxes. That's what they do. They move big and huge amounts of IO simultaneously into the Dante stream and, uh, and out of the Dante stream. That's basically what they're designed for. Uh, Tascam has the ML32D, which has an amazing 64 channel capability, I.O. And below that is the Tascam ML16D, which has 32 channels of anti, uh, analog Dante conversion available. Now, if you notice, one of the ways that these do that is because Tascam uses D sub connectors. D-sub um, is one way to explain these connectors. I've also heard DB25 or D25. Um, you know, it's all basically the same thing, but for the purpose here, we actually call these D-sub connectors. And let me show you basically how that works and what the uh, capabilities are within these devices. So the ML32, which is pictured here, has 32 in and 32 out using D-sub connectors. The ML16, not pictured here, but it was on the previous slide, has 16 in and 16 out. These are I.O. moving boxes, and they're very affordable. Um, uh, as far as the capability goes, of course, these are Dante input-output devices, but they also support AES67 and the Ravina system for people who are using it uh, within a video system as well. 
and our specs, you know, we're Tascam, we're an audio company, are great, they're good. Uh, they're, it, these units go up to 2496, which is uh, okay in, in almost all applications. So regarding the applications, like I keep saying over and over, these are I.O. movers. These have great capacity for lots of I.O. in and out. And those applications would, would basically be for pro audio, sound reinforcement, um, big stadiums, concert venues, uh, houses of worship where there are lots of performers, lots of mics on stage, scoring stages where they, you know, may, may be individually miking, you know, the uh, not just doing stereoization of the string section, they may be placing mics on the piano, the harp, the, the, you know, the brass, the woodwinds, um, where you need lots of I.O. there. And uh, institutions um, like multi-track studios who need or cinema uh, productions where they need to move lots of tracks uh, with one small compact one U device. And this unit will do all of that, or these units will do that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about DSUB. It's a very efficient way to port audio in and out um, of devices. Uh, you know, it's been around for many years. Um, and I'm going to talk about how to how to utilize DSUB with these devices. Tascam has some I/O what we call breakout boxes um, that will accommodate getting the audio in and out of an ML32 or an ML16. So, for example, on the very top of the slide, Tascam has the breakout BO32DE, and as you can see. It is a device that has DSUB capability as well as Euroblock or also known as Phoenix connectors. Euroblock and Phoenix are basically the same thing. And again, those are very efficient ways to um, get in, uh, audio in and out of a device. Next in the middle is the BO16DXN. This is the, a device that allows you to plug up to 16 channels of XLR, and it is a uh, a balanced configuration on the XLR inputs. Then that will translate those into the D sub connectors, which then can go into the ML32 or the ML16. Again, a lot of bang for the buck, a lot of I/O uh, on the BO16DX if you need inputs using XLR. The unit on the bottom is the BO16DX out. And that's the opposite of the input device. This is the unit that will take audio out of an ML32 Dante converter or an ML16 Dante converter, and then port that to XLR balanced outputs. So um, again, the D sub would go to the ML device that would then translate that or turn that into balanced audio on XLRs and flow those then into your power amps, your speaker configurations, um, your mixers, uh, your wireless units, whatever you have, and uh, it'll all work and it'll all work fine. These are very inexpensive boxes as well. Now, speaking of Tascam first and kind of the way Tascam thinks as far as innovation factor goes, innovation doesn't always have to be the latest CPU with the latest digital technology with the latest, you know, uh, uh, speed factor of kilohertz and, and all of that good stuff. Sometimes innovation is done with industrial design. And that's where these devices have some really great industrial design. For example, those BO breakout boxes have invertible rack ears. Why would you want that? Because all we did was we put some extra screws on, on the, uh, the rack ears so you can flip them so the input can be front or the output can be at the front. And it's a very simple design. You just flip the, literally flip the rack ears and the holes are there to accommodate that um, where you may want the D-sub on the front or the D-sub on the back. Um, again, industrial design from Tascam, innovation. Here's a very interesting thing that we did, uh, which is very cool. You can actually turn the units upside down or right side up. Why would you want to do that? 
and you'll notice that this is channel one, that there's a one on the top and there's a one on the bottom, which is upside down in case you did invert it. Well, you'll notice that the XLR connector here is offset a little bit. It's not exactly in the center. So if you need that little extra uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch on the upper part or the lower part, you know, maybe just to get your hand in there, get your fingers in the rack, uh, maybe the cables are not fitting correctly, you can do that by inverting it upside down or right side up. Again, small little things, industrial design, very cool. And then finally, these devices are very shallow intentionally. So within a one rack plane, for example, here is a two scale drawing of a ML32, an ML16 um, is the same spacing, where um, on one U plane, you could put the breakout box behind it, have a small little D-sub connector between the two, and only still use one rack space. Again, innovation, industrial design, the way that Tascam thinks. Now, those breakout boxes are balanced, and you may say, well, great. What, how do I get my microphones, though, my, uh, you know, my favorite microphones and whatnot into the ML32 or the ML16? No problem. Um, Tascam has a solution with our Series AP Dyna microphone preamp. That's a very nice unit. It has eight analog compressors on it um, and a lot of I.O. But one of the things that we included on this unit is a D-sub analog output, which you can see that red line. Um, you would simply take a D-sub cable from the microphone pre to the input of a ML32 or an ML16, and thus you've got microphones going into your Dante system with a very nice professional microphone preamplifier. Um, very transparent, by the way. Um, if I may say so. So there's a solution for that. And you still may be saying, well, geez, you know, I already got my own mic pre's and they don't have D-sub on there. What do I do? These cables are very common, D-sub to either quarter inch balanced. In this picture here is an XLR configuration. By the way, I took this picture um, excuse me, uh, guys from FDW and Full Compass, directly off your website, because I noticed that you sell, I think it was like eight or nine of these type of cables. So, uh, you know, FDW has these cables. Um, I got this directly off of their website. In this case, this is a cable that has a uh, XLR, eight XLR configuration to a D sub or DB25, if you want to call it, um, uh, pins on the other side. So, you know, it's, it, it's uh, very common and, and don't worry, the cables are abundant, they're inexpensive, uh, they're still, you know, very professional and you're writing your audio in the most uh, pristine and professional way. Um, so it's, it's all good. All right, so that was the ML32 and the ML16. Again, to recap, lots and lots of I.O. These are I.O. moving devices in and out of the Dante stream. We also have a series of products called DCP or Dante Compact Processor Series. Uh, these are, again, very powerful uh, devices with less I.O. but internal DSP and configurable more for an integrator application, whether it be a huddle room or um, you know, still moving audio, let's say within a small recording studio um, or from a stage to a front of house and back. Uh, that's what these devices are, are made for. A lot of industrial uh, applications as well, whether it be schools, house of worship, like I had mentioned, even warehouses. Um, that's, of course, that's one of the advantages of using Dante is that a standard Cat5 cable can move massive amounts of audio long distances without having to thread big fat snakes and, and analog cables like, uh, like the old days, so to speak. So these devices, there are a couple of them. This one I'm picturing here is the MM4D in. So this is a four channel mic line 
input device to get into the Dante stream. And you'll notice that this one will accommodate mic or balanced line inputs. Now, there are two versions of this. They're exactly the same other than the connectivity. So the version called the X version is XLR IO. And then below that is the E version for Euroblock, again, or Phoenix connectors. So they do the same thing, input to the Dante stream. Of course, you need to get uh, audio out of the Dante stream. So that's why Tascam makes the ML4D output. Again, there's two versions. There's an X version, XLR output out of the Dante stream, or a Euroblock or Phoenix connector version out of the Dante stream. How about a device that's not just input only or output only? Well, Tascam has that called the MM2D pictured here. It is a combination two in, two out uh, unit to get two tracks or two channels out of or, uh, into the Dante stream and two simultaneously out of the Dante stream. Again, two versions, XLR or Euroblock. And then finally, as part of this Dante compact processor series, there is an uh, AE4D, which is a four channel AESCBU input output device to translate the Dante protocol into this device and then thus it becomes AES EBU in and out still in the digital domain um, so there are configurations that you may have where you are using AES EBU in your integration um, your contractor uh, install and that's what this device could do and it works very well for that obviously so as far as all of the, these devices these Dante compact processor series very compact, as you can see, they're half racks. So within a one U, you could get a, a you know a full four in four out, um, or uh, depending on you know the the unit that you're going to use. But they all share certain things. They all have PoE or power over Ethernet, which means that the Cat5 or the Ethernet cable will power them from your switcher, from your router. Very handy. Uh, that means you don't have to, unless you want redundant power, you don't have to plug power supplies into these units. They do have power supply unit uh, inputs, by the way, in case you would want redundant power, which is, you know, for broadcast essential. Um, uh, or if you don't really need that, and you don't want all those cabling, that cabling going on because you're setting up a, a meeting room or a, hud a huddle room. Um, and you just really want to embed these behind the bookcase, you know, off to the side of the room, never fear PoE. Of course, they are 24 bit, 96 kilohertz capable. Um, so very high uh, specification as far as the, uh, the kilohertz and the bit rate, bit depth go. They have DSP built in, and I'm gonna talk and actually show you real time that in a second. They can be cascaded, so on the back panel, there is a uh, PoE and, an, and a Cat5 input, and then there's a redundant output, which will not only uh, flow the signal through the unit, but it'll also cascade or power and act as a switcher for any subsequent units. That's great because then one switcher can go to a, the first unit and then you don't have to do the, the daisy chain from other switchers. You can just put them in series at that point. Uh, of course, they're compatible with AES67, which is the AES uh, protocol. Uh, and, and this is important. They All of our devices, by the way, are DDM or Dante Domain Manager uh, compatible. And Dante Domain Manager is essential when you need some high security uh, within your system. You you could absolutely cannot have anyone hacking into it, uh, you know, trying to to ping into it and hijack your data. Uh, very essential for cinema productions, um, high end studios where they they really need some high security um, for their tracks um, or the audio for a hundred million dollar movies or anything like that. 
they have scene presets. So once you set up the devices, you can save that as a scene and configure it later. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Now, you set these units up with some very powerful control software, which I'll show you. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Um, and I'm going to fire that up on my MacBook uh, Pro here in a second. They have matrix routing capability, any in to any output. The units come with a surface mountable uh, little adapter so that you maybe not going to put them in the room, um, you know, the, the audio room in a rack configuration. These need to go possibly um, underneath a boardroom table, um, on the side of a, uh, you know, a bookcase, in a huddle room, in the back of a bookcase, wherever. Um, it's all possible. It's, it's, it, it comes with the unit. And again, I had mentioned that if you want, need redundant power, um, you can plug an AC adapter into these units. So specifically, here's the input device. You can see it has four mic or line inputs, XLR or Euro block, and all of our units have DSP built in. And I'm not gonna go through the DSP um, at length here, but you can see it's very robust. This is the input device. So the DSP, of course, is designed for input application and input configurations things like ducking, automatic noise control. Of course, you have fader levels. You can invert the phase, compressor, EQ, um, so on and so forth. And I'll show you these real time. The output device, of course, has four outputs, either Euroblock Phoenix connectors or XLR. And it also has a DSP. This will be a different DSP, of course, than the input device contoured for output configurations. So here again, you'll see a little bit of redundancy. It does have ducking again and automatic uh, noise control, but you'll start to see things like a delay offset, or if you have an array of speakers, let's say embedded into a, a, a ceiling and you need to offset some of the speakers going to the later part or the uh, entry part, you can certainly do that. And I'm actually gonna show you that real time. Next up, here's the hybrid unit, the MM2D, um, two ins and two outs in the same device, either XLR or Euroblock capable. Of course, it has a DSP, and the DSP now is configured for input application and output because these, uh, this device, these two devices have both input and output. So it basically has a combination of the previous two devices all combined into one unit as far as the DSP goes. And then finally, even our AES-CBU Dante converter um, has some uh, light and essential DSP inside it. Simple things like faders, mutes, um, uh, other controls that, that are necessary. All right, as I promised, Tascam has some very robust software. Um, these are uh, available for, again, every platform that it's out there. It's called DCP or Dante Compact Processor Connect software. Um, there is two versions. There is an, a version for the integrator or consultant, which has complete 100% control to set up the system. It has the memories, the DSP, the matrix control, the EQ, the compressor, the delay offsets, automatic noise control, things like that. Things that you're not going to give to the people who are actually gonna run this in the business or the entity necessarily. Um, for them, we have a different uh, set of software called Easy Connect. And Easy Connect is for the, what we call the end user. The system's all been set up. You don't necessarily want the executive assistant, nothing against their capabilities, but you don't want them going in and fiddling with the EQ and the volume levels and the phase invert, and nor do they really want to do that. They want to be able to do the most basic things likely, change the volume, change the input. Um, you know, is the input coming from the video player for the audio? Is it coming from the lectern uh, podium microphone? 
those are the, the super simple things that they really need in the real world. And there is software for that after you configure uh, everything as an integrator or a uh, consultant. So as I promised, um, let's see it in action. Um, in this uh, Tascam studio here, we have a small Dante system. Um, we could set up a large one. I thought just for demonstration purposes, let's make it simple. Um, so what we have here is a Tascam CD400U media player. Great unit. It has all kinds of media uh, capability playback, CD, old school CD, SD, USB, even an AM, FM antenna. Um, if somebody doesn't want to pay for a streaming service and they don't want to have their own content, um, you could just fire up the good old fashioned uh, FM radio, which is built in and tune that in and, and flow it through the audio system. Great for things like uh, salons, beauty salons, car washes, uh, you know, some, you know, just more simple uh, uh, installs. Then we also have an MM4 input device, an ML4 output device. And of course, this is Dante. So I need a primary network switcher. So I have a one gigabit, which is Dante specification network switcher here. My MacBook Pro is connected to the system. I'm using green, which is Ethernet cable. Okay, so my Dante system is now going into uh, back and forth into my network switcher. At that point, Cat5 cable, Ethernet going to the uh, primary input of the MM4 and the primary input of the ML4D. Basic Dante configuration. As far as analog audio goes, um, I have the analog outputs of my media player going into my MM4 input device using XLR. And I also have a dynamic microphone because the MM4 is either balanced in or mic in capable. And so I'm gonna show you uh, the configuration using uh, an external microphone into the Dante stream as well. As far as output goes, I have an output device, the ML4D, XLR, put, uh, XLR outputs, going into some near field monitors. So that's the system. So um, I'm gonna have to escape my presentation here because I want to escape and go to, and I know you can still see my screen, which is fine, the DCP Connect software. So here it is. This is real time. I hit play on my media player and I've, uh, I'm muting the audio, by the way, because I want to have, I want to talk first, and then I'll, I'll play a little bit of audio and show you a couple of other things. So the audio is going into. You can see here the devices that would be connected would all be um, shown here, and I only have two. Um, this could be, you know, ten. And what's cool is that I can automatically just click on it, and it looks at the device. So here's my output device. Let's go back to the input device, the MM4. It's, it's getting audio. Here are the tabs up here, input, mixer. Here's my rotting screen, because I promise it is a matrix mixer. Any input can go to any output. And I do have one preset in here right now, which is this one where I'm using for this configuration. And I set it up and automatically saved it. So you can see I'm flowing audio into uh, one and two inputs from my media player. Three is my dynamic microphone. But first, I'm going to show you some of the DSP. So it's there's nothing to it. You click on channel one. Uh, the first thing that pops up is, is it a mic or a line input? You have your gain, your trim. This is where you set up your, your input select. Very simple. I could turn phantom power on if I chose if I was using a condenser microphone and then phase invert this. Um, the compressor, it's you could turn it on. At that point, you set you know, your ratio, your threshold. You can set up a virtual soft knee, hard knee compression with your attack and your release. I'm only gonna use that on the microphone right now. And by the way, this is input one. I can instantly select, uh, select input two, three, or four right here without having to, to do any other clicking. Um, on any other inputs, it's it's just right there. So go back to one, and if I wanted EQ, by the way, you just select EQ. It's a simple 
grab and do. So you'll see that the frequency is changing by me just moving it forward or backwards, and then the dB level for that particular frequency is changing. Very, very simple. Um, I could automatically just turn the low cut on or off as well. So I do have a microphone going into the system, which is on input number three. Again, I have a dynamic mic. So I have set that to mic, the gain at a high level, high trim, doesn't have a lot of output. It's a dynamic mic, I don't need phantom power. I do have an EQ selected here, and I do have some compression selected here because I do want to compress the, uh, the microphone. So that's what I'm doing here as far as this particular input goes. Um, when you want to escape, you exit out, you're back to the main screen, you got your volume controls, and you have a quick look at all of the inputs that are being configured. You can see that comp is highlighted, the compressor is highlighted here, um, and how are the I've configured the dynamic uh, microphone on the input. Okay, next up, here's the mixer. The mixer, um, this is where you set your, your levels. I can group inputs and simultaneously change them. Um, and uh, also, I'm going to show you in a second here the ducking or the automatic noise control. And then finally, um, I do have a routing setup here. And this is the matrix mixer. So I've set it up so all of the inputs are going to a one singular mix. And the reason I want to do that is because I do want to use ducking on the uh, dynamic microphone. Okay, so let's go back here. If I unmute, I now have some audio. And what I'm gonna do very quickly here is I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit here. You probably hear a little bit of the residual. But now I am talking through my dynamic microphone, which is going into the input of the Dante stream. And you'll notice it's ducking. So I'm going to click the ducking control here. And yes, I have ducking on on my mix here, mix one. I have a, a short release time. I could set that to, let's say, three seconds. I prefer a quick rebound of one second. And so that's how basically a microphone could work um, as far as the ducking control goes. And again, I can instantly choose different mixes here. I'm only using one mix here on this uh, control software. All right. All right, I'm muting the audio output again. I just wanted to show you the ducking control with an external microphone. Um, once I set everything up, I can then go to Easy Connect. And this is the software for an iOS or an Android device that you allow the end user to um, manipulate the system thereafter. And it's a very simple pull-down system where I can choose what I am going to allow them to do or not to do. There are eight targets, by the way, um, on what they can see and what they can change. So that's how you configure the Easy Connect if you were wondering. Let me go back to my input. Real quick, I wanna to go to and show you the output device. So this is the ML4D output. Um, you can see that, let's go to the mixer and let me put some content into it. So, oh, that's right, I am muting. So let me unmute so we can see uh, some action going on there. Sorry about that. Here we go. All right, back to the output device. All right, so this is the output device. So this is the mixer. Again, I could choose um, audio levels for the output. I have a routing screen. Again, this is the matrix mixer. Any input could go to any output. Right now, I'm just using a one-to-one, -one, input one to input, uh, uh, output one configuration. Here's my output screen. Remember I had uh, told you that one of the things you could do is you could set a delay off, uh, offset 
I just uh, connected that. I'll ch choose delay. I'll turn it on. You're not going to see much, but you can see you can have up to 300 milliseconds of delay on your speaker configuration on this particular output, which is number three. And again, each pop output obviously can be different. So let me turn that back off. There's an EQ, just like the EQ on the input. This is on the output though. It's redundant, but you may want to, you know, not use the input EQ um, and use the output EQ, which is uh, going to be on the output. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different. And again, I have a preset set up on this unit, um, which is my media player um, output, things like that here. Let's go back to the mixer here. All right, so that is a literal real-time demonstration of a Dante system from Tascam with the control software mm -hmm. being fully enabled and me showing that real-time. Very good. So let me go back to the presentation. Um, again, here's the system. You could set this up yourself. You could use multiple I.O. Uh, you saw the control software real-time. It's easy. And you saw the Easy Connect software real-time for the end user. It's just as easy um, on how you set that up for them. At this point, uh, we will set it up for Q&A if anybody has any, any questions. And I'll turn it back to uh, to you, Reed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, we did have a couple of questions come in from the viewers. Uh, this first question here is regarding uh, DSP on Dante inputs. Um, are there is there DSP, and if so, what which DSP settings are available for inputs coming over the Dante network? Yes, absolutely. Um, you saw that the our DCP, our Dante Compact processors, have a very robust DSP on the input. Anything from equalization to compressor to phase invert uh, to automatic noise control to ducking. And so uh, there's even more, of course. Um, so yeah, we have a very robust DSP. Once you configure that, by the way, you could save it as a preset and of which there are 50 presets. Um, so uh, of course, Dante itself uh, is just going to flow directly into the unit um, as you know, raw audio, so to speak, um, from your mic preamplifier for your media player. So yes, absolutely, and uh, it works very well. Awesome, another question here about latency. Um, what type of latency are we seeing um, for an application such as uh, video conferencing or something like that? Well, the audio it itself has virtually, within our devices, is virtually no latency um, because these are not like something uh, like a, USB audio interface where you have to measure, you know, mm -hmm. latency or choose latency settings. Um, it's it's literally, uh, you know, within a, a just a couple of milliseconds with our own device. Now, latency can be selected within Dante itself. So within your Dante controlling software, you could choose, you know, the latency settings. Which should, which should have nothing to do with the Tascam devices. The Tascam devices unto themselves are virtually latency free. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any questions right now. If you do have questions that you think of later, uh, feel free to um, contact FDW. We can, we're in touch with Tascam and uh, we may be able to answer the questions ourselves as well. Thank you so much for attending. This concludes our presentation. There will be a brief survey at the end. Um, like I said, uh, please fill out the survey if you have time. This will help us improve future presentations. From FDW, thank you so much. Thank you.